Welcome to Scoop Canada. Today we're diving into the latest political drama that has the whole country talking. Canada's top politicians, led by Deputy Prime Minister Christy Freeland, are up in arms over what they're calling an act of sabotage, the disruption of our national rail service. But let's be clear about what's really happening here. This isn't just about rail workers on strike. It's about a government that has consistently failed to address the underlying issues, allowing tensions to boil over into a full-blown crisis. So what exactly happened? About 10,000 rail workers took to the picket lines after multiple rounds of negotiations fell apart. The result? A massive disruption to Canada's national rail service causing chaos for industries and commuters alike. Freeland was quick to jump in, labeling the strike as sabotage and painting the workers as villains in a story where the government is supposedly the hero. But let's not be fooled by this narrative. So here we are again with yet another rail shutdown, and this time Finance Minister Christy Freeland is calling it sabotage. Yes, you heard that right, sabotage. But let's get real for a moment. Holly Doan reminds us that the last shutdown was three days, and before that, it was eight days. So maybe it's time for everyone to calm down and look at what's really happening here. Freeland's choice of words is telling. By labeling this as sabotage, she's trying to shift the blame away from the government's own failures and onto the workers and the situation itself. But who's really at fault here? It's not the workers who've been pushed to the brink by poor labor relations and lack of meaningful negotiations. It's not the situation itself that suddenly turned sour. It's the Trudeau government's inability to manage crises before they explode. And let's not forget, this isn't just about a rail strike. It's about the government's pattern of mismanagement. The fact that we're even having this conversation again points to a larger issue. The Trudeau government reacts to crises instead of preventing them. They wait until everything is falling apart, and then they scramble to blame anyone but themselves. Freeland's tough talk about sabotage? It's just another smokescreen to distract from the real issue of government that's lost control. Meanwhile, as we're focused on this so-called sabotage, other critical issues are being swept under the rug. The legal steps before Charles Adler can join the Senate are still in limbo, and even if he does make it, it sounds like senators are ready to send him to Coventry. Ottawa might be small, but its political games are as big as they come. In the end, Freeland's words are just another example of the Trudeau government's hollow rhetoric. They're quick to point fingers, slow to take responsibility, and even slower to act when it counts. So yes, this rail shutdown is inconvenient, and yes, it's frustrating. But what's truly sabotaging Canada isn't the workers standing up for their rights, it's a government that keeps failing to stand up for its citizens. The truth is, the Liberals, under Justin Trudeau's leadership, have repeatedly dropped the ball when it comes to labor relations. This strike didn't come out of nowhere, it's the direct result of a government that has ignored the growing discontent among workers for far too long. Instead of addressing the root causes, such as poor working conditions and stagnant wages, the Liberals have been more focused on maintaining their image and playing nice with big business. And now, when the situation has spiraled out of control, they're scrambling to shift the blame. Freeland's use of the term sabotage is a classic example of the Liberals' tendency to sensationalize issues when they're backed into a corner. By framing the strike in such dramatic terms, they're trying to distract from their own failures and paint themselves as the defenders of national stability. But who's really sabotaging Canada? Is it the workers who are standing up for their rights, or the government that has consistently failed to listen to their concerns? Before we move further, discover our exclusive collection of mugs, hoodies, and a variety of daily accessories designed for Canada Conservative Party supporters. Show your pride with our conservative-themed products at affordable prices. Enjoy free delivery across Canada. Let's not forget that this isn't the first time Trudeau's government has mishandled labor disputes. Time and again, we've seen the Liberals drag their feet when it comes to negotiations, only stepping in at the last minute when the situation has reached a boiling point. It's a pattern of neglect that has led to this current crisis. And now, instead of taking responsibility, they're pointing fingers and trying to demonize the very people who keep our railways running. The disruption to the National Rail Service is undoubtedly a serious issue, but it's one that could have been avoided if the Liberals had taken their job seriously. Instead, we have a government that's more concerned with damage control than with actually fixing the problems at hand. Freeland's tough talk might make for good headlines, but it doesn't change the fact that the Liberals have once again failed to govern effectively. As the dust settles, one thing is clear, the real sabotage isn't coming from the picket lines, it's coming from a government that has consistently failed to lead. 
If Trudeau and his team want to avoid future disruptions, they need to start by taking a hard look in the mirror and addressing the root causes of worker dissatisfaction. Until then, all the finger pointing in the world won't change the fact that this crisis is one of their own making. A report by Rebel News highlights the latest blunder from the Trudeau government as Finance Minister Christy Freeland labels the disruption of National Rail Service as an act of sabotage. Yes, you heard it right, 10,000 rail workers hit the picket lines after failed talks, and instead of addressing the root issues, Freeland and the Liberals are busy playing the blame game. It's classic Trudeau-style deflection. Rather than taking responsibility for yet another labor crisis, Freeland calls the strike intolerable and unacceptable as if it's the workers who are sabotaging the country and not the government's inability to manage labor relations effectively. If Trudeau and his team were truly serious about preventing this disruption, they would have acted long before things reached this boiling point. Freeland's response to the media is just as frustrating. When asked about contingency plans, she sidesteps the question, saying, our plan is for the parties to listen to Canadians. What kind of plan is that? It's vague, it's empty, and it's exactly what we've come to expect from this government. Plenty of words, but no real action. And when it comes to legislating an end to this stoppage, Freeland's answer is equally lackluster. We take this situation incredibly seriously, she says, while urging the parties to roll up their sleeves to get a deal done. But where was this seriousness when the negotiations were falling apart? Where was the federal leadership when it was clear that a strike was imminent? It's easy to talk tough now, but the damage has already been done. Trudeau's liberals have shown time and again that they are reactive, not proactive. They wait until a crisis hits, then scramble to contain it while pointing fingers at anyone but themselves. This rail strike is just the latest example of their failure to govern effectively. If this is how they handle critical national infrastructure, what else are they willing to gamble with? In the end, it's not just about the rail workers or the companies involved, it's about the Canadians who rely on this service who are now caught in the crossfire of a government that talks a big game but consistently falls short when it counts. Also, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau, leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. So here we are with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau making yet another urgent call for a quick solution to the rail stoppage. Yes, you heard it right, Trudeau, who's all about urgency when the cameras are on, but where's that urgency been in the lead up to this crisis? It's always the same story with this government wait until the situation reaches a boiling point and then suddenly act like it's all hands on deck. Let's talk numbers for a second. Moody's is out here saying that Canada's rail stoppage could cost over $341 million per day. That's not pocket change, folks. We're talking about 75% of Canada's freight rail traffic grinding to a halt, potentially slashing more than 4% off the GDP. And Trudeau? He's out there saying they'll have more to say shortly, shortly. How about having a plan in place before we start bleeding billions from our economy and wreaking havoc on North American supply chains? But Trudeau? Instead of taking real action, he's making vague promises and offering no concrete solutions. The impacts of this work stoppage are going to be felt nationwide. And what does he offer? More waiting, more talking. No real answers. It's the same old story Trudeau talks a big game, but when it comes time to deliver, Canadians are left holding the bag. Let's be honest here. This government's approach is reactive at best. They let problems escalate and then try to swoop in like they're the saviors. But the truth is, they're the ones who let it get this bad in the first place. This stoppage is going to hurt. And it's going to hurt a lot of people, families, workers, businesses. And while Trudeau fiddles, the economy burns. So... Yes, we need a solution and we need it fast. But don't be fooled by Trudeau's sudden sense of urgency. This is a mess of his own making, and now we're all paying the price. Stay tuned to Scoop Canada for more insights and updates.